This is Farm Journal's Margie Fisher with Bob Bolson, Senior Marketing Specialist at Agco for Seeding and Tillage. Bob, tell me a little bit about this 9812 white planter and why it's significant. 9812 is brand new. We're introducing it right now in Davenport, Iowa, and it's, it's, it's new that we have a 9800 series planters, and that's our narrow transport planters, and right now they've been a, a 16 and a 24 row. <laughs> This is new, it's a 12 row planter. It was something that was requested by through voice of customer meetings with farmers. They wanted a 12 row planter with high capacity central fill system. The central fill system adds that element of, I fill it and I can go further without having to refill it, rather than individual hoppers. If you're on individual hoppers, it can take, you know, 30, 40, 45 minutes to fill the hoppers. With this, you go three times as long and it takes about the same time period to fill the central fill. So you add that, and in a planting season, a farmer wants to be planting. He doesn't want to be stopped along the side trying to fill the planter and fill liquid systems. Bob, let's start at the hitch and talk about some of the key features. Oh, right. One of, the, one of the newest on this that we've introduced is a 24 gallon pump. 24 gallons per minute of oil capacity. That runs in through a using utilizing a 25 gallon storage tank. On top of the tank is a unique feature to this model and the market is actually an on-demand cooling system. In other words, if the oil temperature reaches about 140 degrees, that electric fan will kick on and start cooling the hydraulic oil and, and heat is a is the thing that damages hydraulic systems, hydraulic hoses and everything, and hydraulic motors. You've got to keep the oil cool. In the past, usually cooling was done uh, someplace back on the planter, and right now it's all up, it's all self-contained up at the top, and we have that fan that controls it. It's not dependent on ambient temperature to cool the, to cool the system down. The reason we went to this high capacity is when you have a planter that you're using a central fill system, it requires hydraulics to deliver the seed back to the row units. Then we also have to run the air system that actually does the metering system. It actually does the seed simulation. So we've got hydraulic motors there running fans. Then we also have the hydraulics that actually operates the meters themselves to turn the meters. In the past, when you have a, a smaller hydraulic system, when you get to the end to lift the planter out of the ground, there'd be so much hydraulic demand on the tractor that something would slow down. Either the implant would raise slow or fans would shut down. We didn't want that to happen, so now this hydraulic system will furnish all the power to the planter. The only thing the tractor has to do is lift it, raise it, fold it, or move the markers. So theoretically, farmers could use older model tractors on this brand new planter. Exactly. You could use an older model tractor with a smaller hydraulic system, and the hydraulics on this will take care of all the planter functions. Basically, once it's all unfolded, all the tractor would have to do is raise and lower it or move the markers. Tell me a little bit about some other components as we move down the hitch that are simplifying the mechanics of this planter. Okay. A lot of, a lot of times when you're when you have planters, uh, we don't want to leave hitches long. We, we collapse the hitches so that they're shorter coupled. It's a lot easier to, to operate an implement that's not quite so long and hanging high. So we have sliding tongues, and one of the things we've done is utilize UHMW, which is a high molecular weight plastic as a bearing, and that makes it very slide very easy. There's not metal to metal contact. You're not wearing the paint off. The paint will look pretty still a few years from now. Uh, the other thing, it requires no lubricants. Lubricants, oils and greases and dust and soil create grinding compounds and as much as we can stay away from those, the better off we are. So we're utilizing the HMW bearings in that. With this sliding tongue, we attached this mechanism. It's kind of like the football helmet to the football player. It protects the helmet, protects the brain. This protects the brain of the planter, which is the hydraulic systems and the electrics. So all of those are Nice contained control so when this tongue unfolds, that on scissors, very well protected, and it makes it nice and neatly organized. We have a docking station on the front so you can nicely or, you can organize all of the uh, hydraulic hoses, electrical connections, and uh, simplified for the farmer when he unhooks from it. There's a nice clean place, hang everything, get it out of the way, store it. 
There's even a, a hook to mount the, the pump, so all self-contained. With so many systems on this planter, you're going to have a lot of motors, you're going to have a lot of lines, and you're going to have a lot of pressure. What has been built on to this planter to really alleviate some of the pressure points on all these systems? Great question. Great question. When we adjust the, this planter, we do that in this control box. And this, this is where we adjust our pressures to our, our row unit meters and everything. So inside of this control box, to make it more universal, we established a self-sensing system. And what the system does, typically on a, on a planter or any hydraulic-driven mechanism, the hydraulics go back to the hydraulic motors that are running the fans, running the, running the drive systems. And if you would shut that motor off, there will be a valve and a bypass line, and the oil has to bypass that motor. Doing that under pressures, and it's always under heavy pressures, the 2500 PSI, it creates heat. Again, I said heat is the thing that damages hydraulics. It reduces the life expectancy of motors. This system, we eliminate all of that. We have a sensor on the motor, or any of the motors that are driving back there. If you shut one of them down, the sensor tells this box and it automatically empties the flow back into the tractor or into this system. So, if, if it shuts all the functions back, there may be only 500 pounds of pressure back in the lines. Low pressure, no heat, no friction, longevity of hydraulic fluids, etc. So, this has re replaced a lot and really simplified a lot of the system. And if you're hooked up to a tractor, it would do the same thing. If you're not using this system, fluid would come into it if you shut everything off it'll just dump it right back to the tractor here rather than go through all the lines throughout the entire system. So Bob, tell me about the integrated design of this planter. Okay. Most air planters, what we call air planters, they would be vacuum systems or positive air systems, usually use uh, a plastic pipe manifold on top of the frame and then and drops that go down to the row units to, to activate the singulation systems. This one actually puts the air into the frame of the planter. The air pump, or blower, whichever you mm -hmm. prefer to use, is actually mounted and actually blows directly in to the 7x7 seven seven frame there. And you can kind of see a, a large corrugated tube coming out, and it's dumping into the top of that frame member. Then you'll see that these out of the frame into the metering system. No plumbing on top of the frame. It simplifies everything. Keeps everything nice and clean. We, we're trying to get all the hydraulic lines and all the all the electrical lines off of the top so it's because when you fold everything has to bend and move. This simplifies all that and it's really great having the air in the frame mm -hmm. because it's a nice clean system, not something else to break or leak. If you have that plumbing system on top of the frame and you fold it and anything gets in tension, you break the lines, you don't know it, it doesn't plant. It's in the frame, you can't, you, yes, it's going to work. It's going to work. Thank you, Bob.